know, if you're going to Santa Barbara or something that's two hours, two and a half hours away, it's the perfect car, especially in California with the water on this side, the mountains on that side, just perfect. I mean, it's funny, when this came out, all you could do was drive. Now you got your iPhone, you got your navigation, you're looking at, you know, what podcast should I be listening to while I'm doing this you're just driving it. I feel no need to turn on the radio in this car. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage once again featuring automotive royalty. It's always special when you get a Ferrari. This is a 2001 Ferrari 550 Barchetta Pinafrina. Uh, this is sort of, well, I guess it was the reemergence of a V12 in a front engine Ferrari since the 60s and early 70s. It has the classic Ferrari gated shifter, which is, to me, that's, that's what says Ferrari. You know, when I was a kid, that was the most impressionable thing to see that uh, gear shift lever and all the cutouts and you know, the fact you're just slam shifting, but it's just, just fantastic. So I'm anxious to drive this car. 5.5 liter, about 480 horsepower approximately. This was an open car. Uh, it did not come, well, it came with a rudimentary top, but it was meant to be an open car, basically. Uh, this belongs to our friend Doug Cohen. You might remember him. He's been here before. He had that uh, beautiful Bissarini a while back. And this is his as well, and he drives his cars and uses them. Doug, come on in. Good to see you again, my friend. Thanks a lot. Nice to see you. Hey, thanks for bringing this. This is very cool. And you use this thing, don't you? I, I use it a lot. Yeah. I bought it with about 12,000 miles. It has about 22,000 miles on okay. it about seven years ago, so I put 10 on it. And is, is it everything you thought it would be? You know, I s saw it in Road and Track and said, wow, what a, what a car. And then I drove one in Florida and I said, I want one. I absolutely love it. And I'm glad I bought it with miles because then I didn't have to worry about driving it. It's a wonderful V12, it's torquey, it's powerful, it's smooth, it's a great combination of old and new. It, it's really a wonderful it car. It really is. This is the last connection to that great era. Well, every era of Ferrari is great, but uh, to me, it's, it's my era, the most impressionable, the big V12s, you know, 5.5-liter, uh, which is huge by Italian standards. Most uh, motors in, in Italy are 2 liters or 3 liters, you know, so 5.5, that was impressive. And although 485 horsepower doesn't seem like a lot today, almost 23, 24 years ago, that was, that was an impressive number. It's and still pretty quick today. I mean, yeah. it's, it's low fours to 60, and it's yeah. a 200-mile-an-hour car. Yeah. And, it, and it's still a good-looking car. It, it doesn't show its age. I think anybody who is not a Ferrari person would think this is a car from 2015 or 16. You know, it, it, it looks contemporary. I like the fact that it doesn't have a, a, a wing or any of that kind of nonsense on it. You know, it just sort of looks purposeful. It looks like a high-speed touring car, which I guess, guess is what it is. Now, the top was just like a rag that fit over here, right? There, it, we're so used to the thing that comes out of the trunk and does all this stuff, you know. But no, you put it on with snaps and the whole deal. I've put it on once in yeah, my life. Right. I think it will only be once. It is cool that it has that frameless windshield, so right. it's kind of nice so it didn't have to have all the elements that it would take to put a top on, but it's, it is not a very usable top. Yeah, and California is the only place you can enjoy a car like this all the time. You know, it rains uh, maybe every Arbor Day, and that's about it. So the sun is shining. It's a beautiful day. You take it out for a spin. Uh, very cool, very cool. Well, let's see. Let's open the hood. Let's show them that. Uh, sure. Show them that. V12. Do you want it? Would you like to do it? Is it right here? Yeah, it's right there. Okay. Oh, yeah, there, there you go. Yeah, Perfect. You go. Thanks. Yeah, still a good-looking motor. You know, just great. Now, don't write letter and say Mr. Leno motor means electric. You know, I, I say motor, <laughs> I say engine. They're interchangeable. So shut up. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's so nice not to see it covered with some sort of plastic thing. You can get to the engine and, and, and still see the glory of that uh, V12. And there's real heritage back to the day, actually, back to, back to the 60s when this... Is it basically the same engine block? I don't even know. I, I don't think so, no. no and and, and no. it went from... So 1973 is when the 365 uh, right. GTV 4 Daytona finished. So that was in, in three and a half liter. 
that was 4.4 4 4, liter. 4, 4, so the 3.6 had nothing to do with it. And yeah. weirdly, I think they multiplied it by 12 at the time. So a 365 was the cylinder the output per that's cylinder, right. yeah, and they multiplied right. it by 12, which was 4.4. Yeah. 4. Right, right. And now for some reason, they just multiply by 10. <laughs> So this is a 550, which is a 5.5. 5. Right. I, but it was 23 years later right. that they made this engine uh, because they had the Berliner Boxer and the and the Tessarossa in between. Right. Well, still a good-looking motor, and it just I I love the era of the classic front-engine Ferrari. My favorite is the 330 GTC. I don't know why. Great it's car. not the most desirable Ferrari, but for me, you know, when you're a 16-year-old kid, that's the one most attainable. Not that you would ever actually attain one. But since it was cheaper than the others, oh, that's the one, you know, makes no sense. But yeah, really a, a nice blend of old school and new school. I mean, it's hard to believe that 2001 is, what, 22 years ago, but uh, I guess it is. And this car is almost a quarter of a century old. It seems hard to believe. So it started as a 550 Marinello, which was right. the hardtop version. They right. made about 3,083 of those. And then this was a special edition car at the very end of the run to celebrate Pininfarina's 70th. I think it was launched at the Guggenheim Museum, actually. And um, it's that, exactly, it's a naturally aspirated 5.5 liter, 48 valves. And, and how many did they build? 448 of this model. Okay. I think uh, they were going to build 444, and it was, I think 444 was, a, was a, not a a good luck number in Japan, so they <laughs> went to 448. Okay. Uh, and then they built a few prototypes as well. Right, right. And they're numbered. My car is 399. It's these are these are numbered cars. And this is the only one. And this this series is the only one designed by Pina Farina, especially for. Well, this, this car is designed by Pininfarina, right. and I believe the 550 Marinella was also designed oh, okay, by Pininfarina, right. yeah, but yeah. this was modified with right. so a few features with that more raked roof line, uh, special speed line wheels, yeah. uh, so a few extra little tweaks. Well, it's a great looking car. Yeah, let me put the hood down. Sure. Let's see. Nice stud there. It's nice that it's not red. It's fun to see it in a different color. I love the red interior. And the gated shifter is just, I mean, that's the siren's call there. That just pulls you into this automobile. Yeah, and, yeah. and all of the 550s are gated, right. including all of the Barquettas. And then they went to the 575s, and only a few of those were gated. Yeah. So it's really nice to have that old school gated uh, six speed. Right, right. And what is that on there? Okay. Oh, that's your serial number. Okay. Right. And then has the sport seats come as standard for this car, which are super comfortable. Right. These hoops, which I guess protect you if you've ever flipped over. Right. Uh, Won't the, protect the, your bank account, but they'll protect you. If you right. Over. Yeah. And it's got a good sized trunk, doesn't it? Very. It has a bigger trunk than the coupe. Right. Just the way the lines worked in again, because they don't have to store a convertible top. Right. Right. Oh, very nice. So you can actually carry stuff in this thing. I've taken it to Pebble Beach a couple of times for yeah, the week. Yeah, well, very nicely done. And those wheels are sp specific to this model also. Correct, yes. Oh, boy, They're made by Speedline, which I think made some of the fancy uh, modular wheels for Ferrari. Good luck finding another one if that, you damage it. That's right, yeah. that's right. Now the badge, was this standard? Or was this an add-on back in the day? I think it was standard in this model. Right. Uh, you know, this model kind of came fully equipped. The only option was the Fiorano handling package, which my car has, right. which is a little stiffer springs and shocks, a little uh, tighter um, steering rack, and a little bit different brakes. But I think this was standard. I think for a 550 Marinello, there were a few options. Okay. Does air conditioning as well? Air conditioning works great. Air conditioning in yep. an open car, which is... That's the height of luxury. That's, that's conspicuous consumption. Run the air conditioner, you know. The, the nice thing is you sit very low in the car, and it has this high back, so there's really right. not much wind in the car, too. It, it really insulates you well. And how long have you had it? I've had it seven years. Oh, OK. So you've yeah. had it a while. Very good. Very good. Oh, well, very nice. And the color is called Argento Nuremberg. Right, OK. Yeah. I love the uh, carbon fiber ball. Is that stock, too? That's stock, correct. Yeah, okay. And the wheel's interesting because it has a little car, it's sort of three different elements, carbon fiber, perforated leather, and sort of a, a flat yeah, leather. Yeah. All right. Now obviously, four-wheel discs and, you know. Yeah, rear-wheel drive. Yeah. I mean, 2001 seems like yesterday, but it's a long time ago. I mean, it just, just seems like, you know, 
just yesterday, but uh, wow, very nice. Well, let's can we can we take it for a drive? I'd love to. Easy enough to get into. Yeah, and now you're you you have a roll on your hip to roll up this if you want, and this is underneath if you want to slide it forward. I have all. a what? You. Do you want it forward or more raked vertically? You have a double adjustment. Okay, I might bring it up an inch. Okay, Let's so see. Yeah, it's straight behind you. Perfect. There you go. I guess you got to click the immobilizer. Right. Like that. Click the immobilizer. And you're good to go. We'll give it a shot. Oh, there you go. It's the noise everybody <laughs> loves. You know, just moving that shifter. All kinds of torque, don't even need to test, just let the clutch out, don't even need to give it any gas. Just the right amount of noise. Yeah, they're a little quiet without an exhaust. I don't like loud cars, but I think with the 2B, it really helps the, uh, yeah. the resonance a little. Well, initial impression, very impressive. A lot of torque, a lot of power. You know, it's funny, there's something missing in newer cars. And this is probably the last generation to have it. I don't know what it, I don't know whether to have my hand on the stick and I'm actually moving the gears. I feel like more a part of the car. I drove one of those new SF90s, the Ferrari. Right. A, incredible performance. I mean, impressive car. I like driving this better because I feel like I'm making the car do it. I feel like the other car could do it without me. Right. You it's... know, this, it kind of needs you. You know, to get the most, you have to know how to double, not double clutch, but, you know, rev match and that. It, it makes it fun. It's like playing a musical instrument. Absolutely. You know, the difference uh, between playing it on a record player and hearing it or actually playing the instrument yourself. And this, you feel like you're playing the instrument. It's the engagement you're having versus yeah. just being passive yeah. almost. I just taught my 18-year-old uh, nephew to drive on a stick. Oh, I got him to feel, and he loves it. Well, that's the difference of generation. The fact that you waited till he was 18. <laughs> I yeah. mean, at 15 and a half, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm practicing. I used to have nightmares. What if I can't drive a stick? <laughs> I wake up like in cold sweats. What if I can't do it, you know? I remember David E. Davis was editor of Car and Driver. Right. And one of his most famous quotes was, everybody should drive a V12 car at least once in their life. And then I was stuck with that. I thought, oh, I'll never get a chance to do that, you know? Right, right. So that's one of the great joys of my life, being able to do that. And this is a classic example of that. This really is the final finished version of the 60s and early 70s car. It has more power. I think the original power was maybe three and a quarter, I think, back in the day. Right. So this was close to 500, 480 horsepower, more than enough to get you out of the way. Yeah, and people say this is like the modern Daytona Spider. Right. Which finished in 73. Right, and the Daytona Spiders, I remember, did not have power steering, correct? Oh, no, they, that was one that, big... That was a bear to drive. Right. And until right. you were underway, of course. Right. But this, I enjoy watching the tack make its trip around the dial. Yeah, and you can rev it to, to 8,000, and, and it's yeah. also very torquey. I contend you could sell this car just the way it is today. I think once people drive it, they feel the connection you have and, with and, the automobile. And 550 Marinellos have moved up quite a bit, because yeah. I think people realize they're getting a gated manual. Right. Uh, they're beautiful. They're, they're a little gentlemanly, and this has a little more edge to it. Right, right. Um, so, but they're wonderful cars, and I think they're getting more and more collectible. I mean, it's funny, when this came out, all you could do was drive. Now, you got your iPhone, you got your navigation, you're looking at, you know, what podcast should I be listening to while I'm doing this, you're just driving it. I feel no need to turn on the radio in this car. I agree. Did this even come with the radio? This looks like an aftermarket unit. This, this is an aftermarket. Interestingly, this car was originally ordered by Ray Shear. Oh, and Ray, he, sure, and, I know Ray. Uh, and my friend Brian spec'd it for Ray. Oh, okay. Uh, but he put a very fancy uh, stereo amp in, which I've kept, and for a long trip, I put a little sound on. Right, right. But you don't need it, absolutely. Right. Yeah, enjoy this. I still do have the old uh, yeah. 
set up as well. Was it an Italian radio originally? I think it's a Beck. Well, what, what did oh, they use? I'm not yeah, sure. I think yeah, they use a Becker. Sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. I think it'd be Marconi or somebody. You know, okay. the, the Italians. You got to have another Italian. Right. It's funny in Italy. This would be the equivalent of like the big block Corvette, the Corvette with the 396 and the 427, big 5.5 liter. That was an an impressive number in Italy because that you pay double tax. You know, anything above two liter, oh my God, the taxes were crazy. I see, so that's why there were a lot of cylinders and very little displacement. Right, right. Well, this is for, to have 485 horsepower in 96. Right. That was, you know. Big number. Big number, right. And these were about 258,000 new. Yeah. Although you couldn't get them because they were for the special clients. The regular 550 was around 210. Right but those you could option up with a few items. Do you like the 2V sound on this car? Yeah, very nice. I could even take a little more noise, actually. Yeah. They're quite quiet without a 2V. They're yeah. almost imperceptible, the sound. in a bit and it it's it yeah. starts stiff and then you get used right, to it. Right, you get used to it, yeah. yeah. They're actually, it's funny, they're actually roomier than the 550s. They have more room here and they have a bigger trunk. Yeah, that's interesting. Is this power assisted steering? Power assisted, rack and pinion with a hydraulic assist. Right. Okay, yeah. And it's just it, about the right amount, you know? I think so, too. And the Fiorano handling package makes it a little a little tighter, I think. And a lot of new cars with the electric steering, you don't get the road feel right. that you do with these. Plus, this was built at a time when Ferrari was up in their game and really trying to go for a more, uh, more precision, less problems, you know? Uh, I think... Uh, the NSX sort of increased everybody's supercar game and other manufacturers so wow they built a car with no problems in it. We gotta do that, you know. Right. I mean everything is nicely finished on this car. Even under the hood, there's no, you know, sort of exposed bolts that are rusty on the end of the thread or any of that kind right. of thing. Yeah, I think they built a well it's a well built car. I mean, it was ex very expensive at the time, but I, it's a well, it's a, you can tell it's a well-built, well-engineered car. I'm surprised Ray sold it. He's a real car guy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the history of, I just know he was the original owner. No black man on valve, you weren't trying to do Because <laughs> I wouldn't sell it. No, no. I mean, it's the perfect California car. Yes. I mean, I, as I said, I've been to Pebble a couple times with this, and I look at the weather, it's not going to rain for eight days, and right. off I go. But it's a very relaxing car to drive. It is relaxing. It's a very comfortable car to drive. You know, I, I get tired, so tired of these really hard track road cars. You know, the seats are so numbing. Like to me, I, Aston Martin is like almost also a perfect sports car because it's a GT, but it's comfortable. It's got nice interior. Right. You know. But I remember back in 11 driving a Vantage with a V12 and a stick, and they had these Recaro buttock numbing seats. Uh -huh. I mean, I was literally like driving like this, <laughs> but I couldn't, I didn't even want to lean back or anything. <laughs> the track's nice and true, stops nice and straight. It's hard to believe this is almost a quarter of a century old. Right. Yeah, I think they upped their game when they went back to the front engine V12 of this car. Yeah, I think go back to the what you know. And with no top, there's no shaking, there's right. no towel shake. You know, some cars you go out and you drive for 20 minutes, and you have fun, and you get beat up, and it's a lot of fun. This is the car you drive all day, you know? Right. You know, if you're going to Santa Barbara, or something that's two hours, two and a half hours away, it's the perfect car. Especially in California with the water on this side, the mountains on that side. Just perfect. 
I took this up to Angela's Crest a couple months ago. With, yeah. It was there was snow on the ground with no top. Yeah, yeah. Got the heater going. Yeah, heater going, right. That's my idea of skiing. <laughs> when the only thing this thing doesn't have that you might need is Bluetooth and maybe navigation, but if you got an iPhone, you're fine. Absolutely. I don't think the Bluetooth works so well with a top down anyway. Yeah. Well, Doug, thanks for bringing this. It's a lot of fun. We enjoy all your cars. The Vizzerini was great. And this one is really just a beautiful, beautiful car to drive. It's like a gentleman's car, you know what I mean? You, you can go out to dinner in it. You can take it to the beach. You go for a drive. It doesn't beat you up. It's really nice. Thank you very it much. Was, I really it really appreciate was a, it. It was my pleasure. I appreciate the opportunity, and it was a lot of fun hanging out. Always fun driving a Ferrari. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>